If you're familiar with Like a Boss training, you know that we post courses on Office applications. That's our focus. But we also use Office across a wide variety of devices, and that, of course, is becoming more and more common. People use Office applications on iOS devices or on a Macintosh or on an Android. So I'll take just a moment here to pass along three tips and tricks that will help make the mobile experience or may help make your mobile experience a little bit better. So we'll start with this one, using grayscale and dark mode to reduce eye strain. You may be familiar with some recent psychological thinking that says that just staring at a phone constantly, checking it 20, 30, 100 times throughout the day is stress inducing. So by using, by turning this screen into a black and white screen or using dark mode, we can reduce the effects of blue light that can disrupt our sleep and we can reduce just some undercurrent of anxiety that we feel when we look at our phone and especially these things. Now we can turn off notifications of course, but sometimes they're valuable. But just making them not appear as red can have a psychological effect on us throughout the day. So I'll show you how to do that now. To use the grayscale, I'm going to click on settings here. And then from settings, really the confusing part about this is that you think you would go to display and brightness, but you actually go to general and then you go to accessibility. Now from accessibility, I'm going to click on display accommodations and then use the color filters here and then turn on the color filters. Notice that the grayscale is selected and it's the first checkbox in that list. Now you also may notice that when I turn this on, you don't see it immediately reflected and that's because I'm using QuickTime to mirror my iPhone screen and QuickTime does not interpret those display changes. Those are only displaying on my phone here but I'll include a screenshot of what a grayscale would look like. Now another option I have as I turn off the grayscale is I can go back and I can invert the colors. So this is kind of iPhone's version of dark mode. So if you click on the smart invert, you notice that now the color shift is picked up by QuickTime this time. So I can go back and you can see that I have, instead of a white background, I have a dark background. So again, that can have an impact on the amount of eye strain that you experience when you're using a mobile device. Now, the last thing I want to note here as I go back to the home screen is that if you are using the grayscale or the dark mode and you take a photo, your phone will still take the photo in color. It doesn't make you take black and white photos. Now, another thing you can do to make your experience on a mobile device a little less aggravating is that you can remove the rate this app pop-ups. So you probably are familiar with these. You start using an app and you get some screen that comes up and says, do you want to rate this app or do you like this app? And it's trying to prompt you to go to the app store and rate the app. So the way to turn this off permanently is that you can open up your settings again and go to the home of your settings. So I'm, I'm here at the home page of my settings here. And then I want to click on my iCloud, iTunes, and App Store menu here. It should be the first thing on your menu. And then you click on the iTunes and App Store setting here. Now towards the bottom of this list is the button that turns off this behavior, in-app ratings and reviews. So now if I slide that to off, now I'm not going to be prompted by apps to leave ratings all the time. And if you find something that you like and you want to give the developer feedback or you find something you don't like and you want to give feedback about that, you can still do so at your leisure using the App Store. Now the third iOS trick that I want to pass along here that can improve our experience is the ability to set a timer when you are using your iPhone to fall asleep to music or perhaps audiobooks or a podcast. So as an example here, I've opened up the iOS podcast app. And in the podcast app, you've got this thing right here, the sleep timer, and I can give this a click and set a sleep timer for the podcast that I'm playing. And that's nice, but not every app and not every music player that you might use has a sleep timer that's built in. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to open up the timer here by swiping up from the bottom, open up the timer, and then on that timer, when the timer ends, this is something that's way at the bottom of the list. So it's an easy thing to not uh, know exists, but there it is, stop playing. So when you're setting your timer for 10 minutes for an hour, 
then whatever is playing, if you have that as your setting, click on set, and when timer ends, stop playing. As a very final note here, notice the two apps that are towards the bottom center of my iPhone's homepage. And there's a reason that those are there, and those, that's so I can easily get to both of those apps with my thumb. OneNote and Outlook. So if you haven't used OneNote, the mobile version of OneNote is built to sync with the Universal Windows Platform version. So the version that you're using on a Mac or the free version that's used in Windows 10, these things are built to work across platforms. So this is something that I use day in and day out. In fact, I got my ideas for the iOS tips and tricks that I'm sharing with you right here. I was able to just simply make new notes as I've been out and about, jot them down. So this is something that I use all the time and this synchronization between devices is a really great feature of OneNote. So what'd you think? I'm curious to hear what you have to say, curious about any comments or feedback you have. Should we keep doing similar types of uh, videos with tips and tricks with mobile devices, or should we just stick to the Microsoft-only apps on the PC side of things? Again, curious about your feedback and comments. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.